Okay, so today we're going to take a look at absolute value family functions. In particular, how do you graph an absolute value function? As we talked about in the beginning of this section, the, the graph of an absolute value is the letter V, and here's why. First of all, let's begin with a linear function. The parent function, um, or sometimes I call it the mother function, is the simplest function. Let me take a look at the highlighter. Yep. It's the simplest function, uh, it's the simplest form of a function, I should say. There you go. All right. Let me use this instead. It's the simplest form of a function. It's denoted as f of x. In other words, it's a function of x. Okay. Uh, the parent function of a linear function is y equals x or f of x is equal to x. So what you see in the green is the parent function of a line, which is y equals x. Any other transformation of that form, um, in, in other words, anything of the form y equals mx plus b, will just transform that line or put it somewhere else on the graph. So let's take a look at what happens. Uh, remember that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b, right? So to graph the first line, we know the slope is 3. And since there's no b, that means the b is just 0. So that just means it crosses the y-axis 0, and the slope is 3. So it goes up 1, 2, 3, and over 1. So there's the next point. And if you were to continue that line, right, notice the transformation from the parent function to that function it's a steeper line because it gets from one, the steeper the slope, right? Also notice that, that from left to right, this, the line keeps point going up. That is a positive slope. Compare that to the second one where it says y equals negative two. Again, um, it's just a simple graph. The, the slope is negative two. And then since there's no b, the b is just zero. So they cross, both cross at the origin, but this one, instead of going up, it goes down to and over one. And so if you just graph that line, comparing that to the parent function in green, notice that it's just going on a negative slope. And it's also a little bit steeper because the absolute value of negative two is two and it's bigger than one. So the bigger it is from one, the steeper it is. Okay, go on to the next one. The next two, I should say. Uh, this one is a little bit more interesting. This one actually has a b in it. So for the first one, the slope, we know m is just 1. And the b is 4. So comparing that to the parent function in green, we're going to start at 4 right here and go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, and so on. Right? And you should notice the pattern that the two lines are actually parallel because the mother function y equals x has a slope of one also and as you know parallel lines have the same slope compare that to the other one uh, the next one example four we have again the slope is one but this time the b is at negative three well think ahead if the slope is one it should be parallel to that line. So let's see if we graph it right. We're at negative 3, and again, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. That line is also parallel to the mother function. Okay? So, like we did in uh, yoga in class, if you just take half of that line and bring it back up, it is a V shape. And here's why. Okay, let's get through the details first. Parent, the parent function of an absolute function is y equals a absolute value of x minus h plus k. Now, notice that it's a minus in the middle. That means when you pull out the h from that, you must remember to poop. Okay? Sounds disgusting, but that just means pull out opposites. from parentheses, right? Absolute value is a grouping symbol as well, so it acts like a parenthesis. Anytime you have to pull out a value from a parenthesis, you pull out the opposite. 
the graph of absolute value is in a V shape, right? And the vertex is located at HK, which is why we poop. We pull out the opposite because the H is actually the opposite of what's inside the parentheses because the equation itself is minus H. So that means it's the opposite of H. The graph is also symmetric about something called the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry has the formula, it's a vertical, it's a vertical line, has the formula x equals h. Okay. All right, so let's look at graphing an absolute value. Here we go. We'll start at the parent function, so we have something to compare. Now, I know there's not a whole lot of room on your uh, examples for 5, 6, and 7, so if you want to pull out an extra sheet of paper and pause the video right now, that might be a good time. For example, 5, uh, the parent function is y equals absolute value of x. You can also think about this as y equals uh, 1 times the absolute value of x minus 0 plus 0. Right? Fill all that stuff in. 1 is the a. a is basically going to be the slope of your, your uh, the steepness of your v. But the zeros... Uh, indicate your H's and K's. So the very, very first thing you want to look for is the vertex. Right? If you know that it's 0, 0, then you know your vertex, the, the, uh, the very tip of the, absolute, the V, is going to be at 0, 0. So that's usually the first point that we plot. Okay? Now, take the X coordinate of that vertex. Right? Take the x coordinate of that vertex, and we want to pick a number that's before x and a number that's after that x to f plot the other points. Since the v is symmetrical, so it's going to be the same number on each side. So a number before 0 is negative 1, a number after 0 is positive 1. Okay? This is a function chart, so you have to run it through the function to get to the y. The function is the absolute value of x. In other words, to get to y, you have to take the absolute value of the x, uh, of the x value at that point. So the absolute value of negative 1 is just 1. The absolute value of positive 1 is just 1. Here's how you know you did it right. As long as it's an evenly spaced uh, number before the h and after the h, this side right here should be the same every time. So the y should be the same. And that's how you know you're going to get your perfect v, because check out what happens when you graph it. We have the other two points as negative 1, 1 and 1, 1. So after the vertex, you just need to find two points on either side of the vertex and look where they stand. Negative 1, 1's over here, 1, 1's over here. That is your perfect V form. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at what an A does to a graph. Here we go. As you can see from this graph, our A is 2. Again, if you imagine zeros where the H's and K's are, this just tells you that your vertex is at 0, 0. So again, pick a number before 0, so negative 1, and after 0 is positive 1. We're going to run those numbers through the function and get our y's. So our function is 2 times the absolute value of x. So the first one is 2 times the absolute value of negative 1. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times the absolute value of 1 is also 2. And again, the y should line up. So the other points are going to be negative 1, 2, and 1, 2. So now we have three points to graph. I like to graph the vertex first, which is at 0, 0. Negative 1, 2 is up here, and negative, uh, sorry, 1, 2 is over there. So compare that to the first graph. As you can see, that A just made it more steep, right? Because, again, anything with an absolute value more than 1, 
where the A is, where the slope is, is going to make it more steep. We see the alternate case in the next one. The first two are positive slopes. The third one, notice the negative in the A. Okay. Also notice that A is going to be less than 1. The absolute value of A is less than 1. The vertex, this first thing we find, it's easy. There's no H, there's no K, so 0, 0. Right? Pick a number before 0 and after 0, so negative 1. And 1. Run it through the function, so negative 1 half. Actually, let's change this. Instead of negative 1 and 1, how about we do 2 and 2? Because you're multiplying by 1 half, you're going to get a fraction. So let's put a number that uh, is actually that 1 half can actually work with. So let's change it to 2 and 2, just to spice it up. Um, so it's negative 1 half times the absolute value of x. So negative 1 half times the absolute value of negative 2, and negative 1 half times the absolute value of 2. Oops. Sorry. There we go. That's supposed to be an absolute value. Sorry about that. Um, if you were to run that through, negative 1 half times 2 is going to be negative 1. And again, negative 1 half times 2 is also negative 1. So the other points is we're going to be negative 2, negative 1, and 2, negative 1. We could have used the negative 1 and 1, but you would just gotten uh, decimals, and it would be a little bit tricky to graph, um, especially on the small graph paper that you get. All right, so our vertex is at 0, 0. The other points are negative 2, 1, and positive 2, 1. And already you can see that this V is fatter than the parent function. And it's fatter than the parent function because of the A. Take the absolute value of negative 1 half, that's less than 1. So any number whose absolute value is less than 1 is going to have a fatter V. Also notice this V is opening down because it's a negative absolute value function. Okay. All right. So let's get more interesting with the vertices because so far we've just done 0, 0. For this next one, we actually have a K. Yeah? Our vertex um, is at, there's no H, so 0, but the K is 3. Notice the 3 is not inside the absolute value. It's not inside the parentheses, so k is what it is because the formula says plus k, so it is what it is. So if your vertex is at 0, 3, you still have to pick numbers before and after the h. So you're still picking numbers before 0 and after 0. Since there's no crazy fractions to worry about, you can just pick negative 1 and positive 1, run it through the function, and go from there. So the function is absolute value of x plus 3. So the absolute value of negative 1 plus 3 is 4. And the absolute value of 1 plus 3 is also 4. So the other points are negative 1, 4, and 1, 4. Now we're good to go to graph. Vertex first at 0, 3 brings your V up by 3 points. So notice the K shows a vertical shift in the vertex. So that means I'm going to bring the entire V up by 3. The next one, next point is negative 1, 4. So that's right here. And 1, 4 is over here. Same shape as the mother function because the a is 1, but it's just been brought up. So that's what happens when there's a k. The k is a vertical shift. So in class when I say holy shift, check out that mother function, I'm talking about the k. Take a look at example number 9. In this case, in this case the k is negative.
So in this case, the K is 4. So our vertex, uh, sorry, K is negative 4. So our vertex is going to be 0, negative 4. We still pick a number before 0 and after 0, before the H's. So that would be negative 1 and 1, because there's no fractions to worry about. Run it through the function. So absolute value of negative 1 minus 4 is 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. The second one is also 1 minus 4, which is also negative 3. So the other points are negative 1, negative 3, and 1, negative 3. So our vertex is at 0, 4, points at negative 1, negative 3, and positive 1, negative 3. So if you take a look at the shift of this, it brought the V down, the mother function, down by 4. Just to reiterate, the K is a vertical shift. Well, if K is the vertical shift, then H is the horizontal shift. And this is the one where you have to remember to poop. Okay? So, just looking at this graph, the vertex is, since it's a minus 2 inside, it's going to be a positive 2 and a 4. Okay, so when you pick your numbers, 2 is your, a, your x, so we got to pick a number before 2 and a number after 2, let's go with 1 and 3. Okay, now at this point, as the equations get longer and longer, you do have a handy dandy calculator, here's a quick way to find the rest of the points, the key is to find the vertex. On your calculator, if you hit y equals and plug in that function, hit second zero to get the absolute value, and type in x minus 2, get out of the absolute value and hit plus 4, okay? Instead of hitting graph, above graph is the table uh, function. So if you take a look at the graph button, it's the table function. The table function's in blue, so you have to hit second table. And that'll give you every single uh, every single value for the absolute value. Remember, it's line, so it's an infinite amount of values. Well, if you find the vertex, which is right here at 2, 4, let me just drag the screen this way so you can see it. Right? If the vertex is at 2, 4, which is right here, you can easily see that we have other points at 1, 5 and 3, 5. So the other points are going to be 1, 5 and 3, 5. So let's graph this puppy. Here we go. The vertex is at 2 and then 4 and 1, 5 and 3, 5. There it is. Notice that the A is 1, so it didn't change the shape or the size of the V. All it did was move it vertically four spaces and to the right two spaces. That's it. And that's why it, you pull out the opposite, because the minus would indicate a negative, but actually you're moving to the right. So pull out opposites from parentheses. Okay, let's try this again. Here we go. All right, so in example number 11, you can see that the H is a plus 3 inside 
the absolute value. So if you remember to poop, it's easy to see that the vertex is going to be at negative 3, negative 1. So if you graph this in your calculator, plug in the value in your calculator, again, just hit the y equals. You can clear out the other one. Second zero gives you absolute value, x plus 3. I didn't do that right. Second, let me clear this out. Yeah, clear, clear. Okay, Let's try again. My calculator was slowing on me. Um, second zero for absolute value, and x plus three get out of the absolute value minus one. Second graph brings you to the table function, and now you just have to scroll up a little bit to find where negative 3 is and find numbers around it. So we found negative 3 right there. I'll just drag this down to here so you can see it. So if this is our vertex, Then we can pick the point before it and after it. So we can pick the point negative 4, 0, and the point negative 2, 0 to graph as well. You only need three points, the vertex and one before and one after it, to get an idea of where the, the V is. So at for on the graph, we have negative 3, negative 1, and then negative 4, 0, and negative 2, 0. It's this right over there, which as you can tell, again, the K is the vertical shift, so our graph went down by 1, H is horizontal, so it went to the left by 3. They love asking the vertical and horizontal shift questions on the SOL, so just note that it, you can get it from the equation. All right, example 12, here we go. By right now, you should be able to figure out what the vertex is. If you guessed 1, 6, you are right. And that will help you find the other points, especially if you're using that calculator. So let's clear this out. Type in negative 3, absolute value x minus 1 plus 6 and go to the table. All right? Since our vertex is at 1, 6, it is right there. This gives us a good idea of where all of the uh, points lie. So again, here's our vertex at 1, 6. So the other points are 0, 3, and 2, 3. Graphing this, we go over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 0, 1, 2, 3, and 2, 3. Take a look at this graph. It is much skinnier than the parent function. Why? If you guess because the A is negative 3, you're absolutely right. Because the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, it's bigger than 1, so it's going to be a skinnier graph. For the last one, can you guess from the equation, is this going to be a skinny graph or a fat graph? Let's find out. By now you should be able to read the vertex as negative 4. 3, remembering, I'm sorry, negative 3, remembering to poop that positive 4. So going into your calculator to find the other two points. Don't forget we have that handy dandy uh, fraction button. If not, you could just type in parentheses 1 half. But just to remind you, alpha y equals is the fraction button. And you could just type in that fraction as you see it second zero to find absolute value, type in the function, 
get out of there. Minus three. Second table. And this time we know our, our vertex is at negative four. So take a look at this. Be smart about the points that you choose. So because of that fraction, we're going to have some decimals some places. Here's our vertex. Five, negative 5 gives you negative 5, 2, but if you pick 6, negative 6, that's a nice point at negative 6, 2. So don't, feel free to pick the easy points. The next time that negative 2 happens is at negative 2. So negative 2, negative 2 is a point. And so when we graph negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 3, goes over here. Negative 6, 2 is over here, and negative 2, 2 is over here. So watch what happens to that mother function. It gets wider. So if you guess that the graph got wider, you're absolutely right. Hopefully this will give you a good idea on how to graph an absolute value function. You may use your calculator as needed to find the extra points. Um, but make sure that you actually tell me what extra points that you're using so I can see from your graph if you're doing it correctly. If you have any more issues, feel free to email me or send me a Remind 101 text and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Good luck, everyone.